Hey friends, how you doing? It's Tim and I really appreciate you being here today. This is part one in a special series that I'm doing over the next two weeks on how to take back your health. I think it's really important to, uh, uh, to learn how to take charge of what's going on in our lives because so many people are sick and unhealthy and not feeling well. And if you don't feel good in your mind and in your body, then you're not going to feel good in your life. And so I'm taking a walk here through, uh, through the trees and find my walking path and then uh, and then we're gonna hang out because it's nice tonight so if you feel like it you could go for a walk with me and that'd be pretty awesome so anyway we are living in a really toxic time if you haven't noticed people are stressed out and um, if everybody's feeling exhausted and we don't feel like we have enough time and uh, it just seems like uh, there's so much pressure going on all the time and then you know we're not feeling good and we're supposed to get healthy and then what do you do when it's time to get healthy well I guess I'm gonna eat better right and so you say okay well we're gonna we're gonna go eat better and then you look in the pantry and then there's nothing to eat and then you look in the fridge and you're like well I can't eat any of this crap and then you're like well let's go out then and so then you get in the car and you start driving around town and you realize oh my gosh there's nowhere to go you know everything has we were at this uh, one place and they had uh, it looked like a, a shrimp place, you know, and the shrimp was on skewers and everything and we thought well Maybe that'll be a healthy place and uh, but the we looked at the calories and it was 1400 calories 1440 calories for this plate of shrimp <laughs> and We're like, you know, it is so challenging to eat healthy and And so what are you supposed to do? And then what I find is that because we're so stressed out and because um, it's challenging to eat healthy and because we're stressed out and we're not sleeping well then after a while we just give in and we're like the heck with it and we go back to the soda and we go back to the candy and we go back to the the cookies and the ice cream and the sweets and the popcorn and the and the carbs you know and all that stuff and we start to feel really frustrated and depressed and then when we feel depressed we have zero mo motivation zero willpower and you know and then a lot of times what happens is we start our health just starts to fall apart right so all of a sudden we're having all kinds of problems with acid re reflux or we're having digestive issues or our feet are hurting or you know all of a sudden we're getting tingling because we have poor circulation or we end up having type 2 diabetes or you know we have um, high cholesterol and uh, you know it just goes on and on and so then what do you do you go to the doctor and what does the doctor do the doctor always says here are some drugs and so then you start taking these pharmaceutical drugs and all of a sudden you start getting the side effects and now the side effects are weight gain and more fatigue and it's like oh my gosh are you kidding me how are we supposed to get out of this cycle what are we supposed to do and so now as a coach and a, and a mind trainer you know I've been studying human behavior for 30 years now it's been a long time that I've been uh, watching uh, and learning and trying to figure out what can you do to train yourself and get yourself to take action long enough to actually have goals become a reality because really that's the secret the secret is you got to get clear on what you want you've got to have a good plan a good strategy and then the whole rest of it is keeping motivated long enough to actually make that goal come true and for most people that's the hardest part most people will say I know what to do I just can't get myself to do it right I know I should be living healthier I know that I should be taking action in all these ways but I just cannot get myself to do it or I do it for a little while and then I it which is kind of an abbreviated Atkins I mean all kinds of different things that are out there and I started helping people try to stay motivated because they said that was their issue they said I know I've been on every diet there is I know how to diet I just can't get myself motivated and so I thought okay well I'm gonna motivate you I'm gonna get you fired up and ready to go out there and make things happen and so we would I would motivate people and they'd be leaving my office ready to conquer the world they'd be like I got this I think it's wearing off <laughs> I'm starting to lose my motivation and I'm like really I'm like why and like I don't know I was so fired up and I was feeling so good and then all of a sudden I started to feel stressed again or I got on the scale and it didn't show what I wanted I lost a few pounds but I felt like I should have lost more I really thought I was doing good and uh, and so 
uh, I just kind of lost all my motivation and I went crazy over the weekend. I figured I'm just gonna give myself a break and then I shouldn't have done that and I went nuts and now I put the weight back on that it took me so long to take off and now I've totally lost all my motivation and I feel like we gotta start all over again. And as soon as I heard those words as a coach, we gotta start back to square one, I was like, oh, are you kidding me? I don't wanna start back to square one. Now I'm the coach saying that. I can't imagine how that person felt that was saying it. And so it kept happening over and over. So I reached out to my friends in the coaching and counseling profession and I said, what do you do to help people get healthy? And what they said was pretty shocking. They said, we don't help people with weight loss. It's too hard, right? They're too hard to motivate. People that want to lose weight, they don't want to try. They're, they're too hard. They resist, they sabotage, they say that they want this, but they don't really do anything to go after it. And you know, so we don't even mess with it. And I'm like, really? I'm like, that's crazy. Because one, I don't back down from a challenge. And two, I, I thought that our goal was to help people with the toughest stuff that's out there, right? And so, and three, both of my grandfathers, if you don't know my story, both of my grandfathers died from type two diabetes. And so me and diabetes, we ain't friends. And uh, they took my grandpas from me when, when uh, you know, um, before they should have, <laughs> right? I should have had many, many more quality years with my grandparents and I didn't get that because um, my one grandpa, um, you know, they amputated his leg and then he just lost his spirit and he, and he just didn't handle it anymore, right? And so, uh, and then my other grandpa, um, you know, complications, same thing. And so I figured, all right, if nobody else is gonna help these people figure out what to do to take their life back, then, then what am I gonna do about it? And so I thought, well, how do I approach every other problem that we have, right? If people wanna make more money, if people wanna improve their relationships, if people wanna overcome bad things that have happened to them in the past, if people want to overcome uh, the fear of public speaking or any kind of fear or challenge, you know, what is it that they do? What happens in their mind? And, uh, and I thought, well, I know how to do that stuff. And if I don't know how to do something, I usually find people that are really successful at, you know, they've already achieved this goal that I want to achieve. And so then I study them, right? I try to break down what's going on in their mindset. Cause there's always two things. There's your mindset and your strategy, right? It's your mindset is your beliefs, your attitude, what you say to yourself, what you focus on. It's what happens in here. And then the second part is your strategy, your plan, you know, for how you're actually going to get from point A to point B. You can have an awesome mindset, but if you don't have a plan, then you, you, you know, the old adage, um, if you fail to plan, then plan to fail, right? So you gotta have your mindset and your strategy. So I started looking for people who, um, who had taken weight off and kept it off, and this was before the internet, right? And so I would read articles and I would run into people and I would ask them 20 questions, and, uh, or people would come into my office that were there because they'd say, you know, I lost 80 pounds and I'm really excited, but now I wanna quit smoking, right? Or now I wanna do some, something else, achieve some other goal. And I'd be like, let me ask you a couple questions about how you lost the weight and how you kept it off. And as I started interviewing people, I started realizing that their mindset, what they thought, what they said to themselves, how they thought about food, what they thought about exercise, what they thought about drinking more water, how they approached keeping their stress down, how they prevented relapse, how they kept themselves from uh, getting back sucked into the cycle, right? Into the food trance, into the sugar trance. They had a very different approach than my clients who were constantly struggling. Now, that's not really a big shock, right? Uh, that's pretty common. Uh, if you are the people that are having results and getting results and the people that aren't, there's usually a big distinction in either their approach or their mindset, and usually it's both. And so I started writing things down, putting the connections together, and I started seeing the patterns. So then when somebody would come into my office talking about struggling to lose weight, I'd start listening for certain patterns. I'd start listening for how they talked about things. Like for example, if they came in and they're like, well, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I'm skeptical, we'll see what happens, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I knew right away they were gonna have a hard time because they weren't coming in committed. They were coming in with wishful, hopeful thinking, which means I'm gonna try this until it gets hard, and as soon as it gets hard, I'm gonna give up. 
And so it was like, good, you're showing me your cards right off the bat. Other people that I, I would listen to, they would come in and they'd say, I know I can do this. I believe in the power of the mind. I've seen your testimonials. I know that, that, that we can do this together. I just need the right tools and the right support and I'm gonna make this happen. I am committed. Then I knew that those people were gonna get the result. And no matter what it took, we would keep going because I would stay as invested in the gym and there's pizza laying all over the table, right? And one of those uh, cookies too. Right. And so, all right, well, here's the program on how to set boundaries. Right. And so, or whatever it was, I'm not sleeping well. All right. Well, here's a rejuvenation program to recharge your emotional batteries while you're sleeping at night. So you wake up in the morning and you feel rested and refreshed. You know, we plug our cell phones in our smartphones at night when we go to bed so that when we wake up, there's a hundred percent charge. Well, why don't we do that for our brain? You know, there's so many times where we're not sleeping well at night because we don't plug in, we don't have a way to recharge. What most of us do is we eat, we smoke, we drink, and that messes up our sleep. It actually makes it worse. And so what do we do? We emotionally recharge. I think everybody should have a copy of my brain software at birth, uh, the incredible self-esteem program. I think everybody should be given a copy of that so that you know your value and you know your worth and you feel self-love and acceptance because when you feel love and acceptance for yourself, you can make yourself feel safe. And if you can feel loved and safe, that is the best way to create more inner peace and joy in your life. I don't know any way that's faster than that. So because we can achieve goals or we can make money or we can you know go on a date and we can have all this excitement right but that stuff fades what's consistent is how you feel about yourself and your ability to make yourself feel safe and when i look around in the world today there's so much toxic energy there's so much of it there's so much fear and so much anger and so much mistrust and so much hate and so much finger pointing and so much blaming there's so much toxic energy and that toxic energy goes into our mind and then it manifests in our body. So I'm in Indiana and 33% of people in Indiana are obese, a third of the state. And so our healthcare is in crisis, our state is in crisis, and then another 21% are still smoking, right? So between the 33 and the 21%, that's 50% of Hoosiers in Indiana, just in Indiana, 50% are smoking or obese. That's a problem. And there is no way that the healthcare is gonna be able to solve any of that. In fact, I was just talking to a heart surgeon the other day and he said that there is no way that they're able to, to keep up and even teach people, even teach his patients how to take care of themselves because there's no time, right? He has four minutes with him. There's no time to be able to provide any kind of education. He's spending all of his time typing in the codes into a computer instead of being there with his, with his patient. And doctors are burned out, right? They want to help, but they are burned out. And nurses, oh my gosh, same thing, right? And so healthcare is not going to save us. Medicare, Medicaid, the government, nobody's going to save you. There's only one person that's going to save you, and that's you, right? Now, if you said it's you, Tim, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's you, okay? I'll help you. But as uh, Jim Rohn, the famous motivational speaker, once said, no one can do your push-ups for you. But what we can do is make them easier. Like in the beginning, if you want to do push-ups, you just lean against a wall. You don't have to get down on the ground. You just find a wall here and you just, oh, there you go. You just do push-ups against the wall. This is actually harder than it looks because I'm on a hill right now. <laughs> okay, and so you start out by doing this. It's a little easier than if I was on the ground but it starts to add up over time. Small deposits over a period of time add up to lead, you know, add up to greater wealth, right? Doesn't matter if it's financial or for your health or for your happiness or for your relationships. If you keep making these deposits every day into your health and happiness account, then you're gonna end up wealthy in your health and happiness. So, all right, so anyway, so with all of this going on and all this toxic energy, what are we to do with it, right? Well, I started realizing that all we have to do is upgrade our mindset, what we're talking about in our head, what we're doing in our mind, because that's where the biggest breakthroughs are. Because again, you can have the best strategy and there's a lot of great strategies out there, but if you don't have the focus, the motivation, the resiliency, the ability to keep yourself going when you have a setback, if you don't have that ability to love yourself yet or, um, 
or overcome the past. If you have beliefs in your head that say, hey, I'm not worthy, right? Or um, I've had people say so many things. Every time I start to get healthy, my family stops talking to me, right? Because they're obese, right? And they don't want me to be healthy. Uh, you know, there's so much self-sabotage and there's sabotage from other people around you. And so just because you want to get healthy doesn't mean your family does, doesn't mean your kids do, right? It's so, again, we've got to make sure that, um, that we are getting right with our mindset. We've really got to have a mindset upgrade. We upgrade our phones, we upgrade our laptops, we upgrade all this computer stuff. But what about the computer between your ears? A lot of times, people are walking around with the same MS-DOS program, their original programming, and they haven't ever upgraded it. And unless you go out looking for seminars that teach you how your mind works, we never learn it, right? We don't get taught how, how um, it's called emotional intelligence. We, we're not taught how our mind works in school. We're not taught it in church. And we're not taught it usually from our parents because they don't know. And so where are you supposed to learn it from? And the fact is we don't, people don't learn it. What they do is they do the same stuff their parents did, right? And we try to upgrade it a little bit better because we're not gonna be like our parents, but then we end up doing the same kind of things anyway. And so you have to learn how to do this. So I went to school for psychology for a number of years and, and even then, after going for training for human performance and peak performance, I still didn't learn all the stuff that I know now for how to transform human behavior really quickly from that. I learned it from going to the seminars. I learned it from going to all these peak performance trainings. I learned it from going to the alternative fields like hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming and uh, you know all the other stuff like EMDR and EFT and, and uh, you know all the other approaches that are out there and going to uh, Tony Robbins seminars, which really I learned that he just uses Ericksonian hypnotherapy and neurolinguistic programming and uh, he just calls it something else right and so that's where I learned um, all the cool ninja skills that I have developed over the years and uh, and that's where the biggest breakthroughs are so I started incorporating a new plan I went back to my office about 10 years ago and I said uh, all right we're gonna do something different. When people come in to lose weight, we're gonna have a whole different approach. We're not gonna start on strategy. We're not gonna count calories. We're not gonna do any of that stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on um, transforming your mindset, right? We're gonna upgrade your mindset. And that's what I started focusing on. And I started teaching exactly the way that people who are getting the results and keeping the results, what, we, what they were thinking, what's going on in their mind, the running conversations that they have in their head, and I made the unconscious conscious, right? Which means that I would ask so many questions that people would be like, well, I guess that is true. I never thought of it that way. Oh, I never put it together that way. But I guess that is what I do. So I was trying to figure out and map out the, uh, it's almost like there's these equations running in your unconscious mind like algorithms. And I had to try to figure out what they were so that we could use them intentionally to start getting better results, right? In neurolinguistic programming, they say that, you know, it's the study of excellence. It's the study of what works. And, uh, and so if you can figure out what somebody is mentally doing to create success, then you can follow and duplicate and replicate those steps and then you can have success as well. And that makes so much sense. So why aren't we doing that then? And every time I help someone have a big breakthrough, they always ask me that. They're always like, how come everybody isn't using this? How come everybody doesn't know about this? And the, the short answer is because we're not big on emotional intelligence in this country, right? So we're, we just don't, we haven't made it a priority. We're too focused on the strategy. We're too focused on all these external things that we're supposed to do that are gonna somehow make our life better. We focus on the external stuff instead of going inside, instead of going internal. One of my favorite quotes is that if you learn to go within, you never go without. But then people are like, well, one, what does that mean to go within? Two, I don't know how to do it. Three, what do I do when I'm there? And those are all very valid questions. And so those were questions that I asked too. But now I know the answer, right? Now what you do is you upgrade your beliefs that are holding you back because there's always a belief in front of you and your goal, right? If there's an obstacle, if your goal is here and, and, and uh, it feels like something's blocking you, it is, it's called a belief, right? And so we figure out what those beliefs are and we upgrade them. 
That gives you the ability to look at the situation differently. You reframe the situation. You look at it in a new way. Reframing means like you take an old picture, you put a new frame on it and suddenly it looks nicer, all right? So reframing is what they do to wine. If you uh, ever go buy wine in a store, you'll find that there's like a gazillion bottles of wine. And what they're doing is they're selling you the label, right? They're selling you the fancy label. Whatever label jumps out, that's usually the wine you buy unless you, you know, are a connoisseur. Uh, but most of the time people are just feeling like I'm in this kind of mood and I'm gonna buy this label and so they're framing it What we want to do is we want to frame the situations in our life so that we feel calm confident secure motivated inspired and we're ready to um, You know to get up and get at it again until we get what we want and that is the only way to succeed You will never procrastinate your way to success You will never be able to just lay on the couch and make all your dreams come true. It's just not gonna happen and so uh, we start with your beliefs and then we start with your self-talk and what you're saying to yourself and how you say things to yourself and uh, And then we start to create new neuro associations Which means that you know the the main driving force of, of most human behavior is we're trying to avoid pain and create more pleasure And so if you say I love to eat and I hate to exercise, but I want to lose weight oh, You're gonna be in trouble right now. You don't have to exercise to lose weight There's plenty of people that will tell you that that the biggest weight loss success is gonna happen from what you're eating and not you just moving. But fitness makes you feel good, it makes you feel alive, it gives you energy, it makes you feel more refreshed, it gets you out in nature, it makes you feel, um, it just kinda of gives you uh, a happier feeling inside, right? So it will help you burn some calories, but you can walk for an hour and burn 400 calories and then go home and eat a small little meal that's 400 calories and it's kind of a wash so you know when but but fitness there are ways of doing it that can speed up your weight loss results for sure but fitness for me is more about how it makes you feel it's not about going out there and trying to burn up this giant sweat for an hour because um, a lot of times that can backfire so but we'll talk about that down the road because I've got 14 episodes and this is number one what I thought I would do, I have a class that's coming up, full transparency. I've got a class that's coming up on May 22nd. It's my body and mind transformation program. It's the epitome of everything I've put together to help people to transform their life by transforming the way that they think about eating. So my program would complement any diet. If you are on a particular diet program and you love it, that's good. This will accent it. This will give you a jump start. If you don't want to be on a diet, you don't have to be on a diet but this will give you the mindset upgrade that you're looking for. And so what I, uh, what I thought I would do is over the next uh, you know, 14 videos is I'm gonna teach you the strategies that I've learned for how to avoid self-sabotage, how to upgrade your beliefs, um, what to say when you're talking to yourself, how to create new neural associations. So you're associating pleasure to your action steps, which keeps you moving forward, and you associate pain to the stuff that's holding you back so that you naturally procrastinate on that stuff, you move away from that stuff. So I was talking to someone tonight and she said, that was where the pizza thing came up. She said, uh, I, I went to work out and I told my mom that, um, uh, that I don't wanna eat any of that stuff because I wanna be healthy. And she said, oh, you should treat yourself. You've been working so hard, which is just a big sabotaging thing to say. Her mom's trying to be nice, but she's not being supportive. And so the, she, my client went, she exercised, she comes back in the house and there's three pizzas sitting there, right? And that cookie that I'd mentioned earlier, you know? And I said, I want you to imagine that some sick person just sneezed all over that pizza and then walk away. Go get a protein shake and be proud of yourself because your goal is yours, it's not your mom's, right? No matter what anybody else does, your goal will never be more important to anybody else than it is to you. And so you got to protect yourself. You got to put those boundaries in place. And so we'll talk about boundaries. We'll talk about scrutiny. We'll talk about how to get yourself to eat the right foods at the right times and the right amounts. We're going to talk about fitness and some strategies that you can do to jumpstart your desire to feel motivated for exercise. So we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff over um, every night. My goal is to do a video at 7 p.m., which is a challenge for me because that's family time, but I've already talked to my family and got support from them, mostly support from them, <laughs> as long as my videos are short and I don't run on for hours, um, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out here outside and if it's raining, then I'll shoot it at my office here at home. And, uh, but I'm gonna share all these strategies with you and then at the end of two weeks, we can do the program together. 
The magic with the program is actually going through the emotional experiences. I'm going to give you all these tools and all these insights which are going to be really powerful for you and I recommend that you take lots of notes. However, the magic isn't just in the strategy, it's in going through the mind training experiences. And that's something that we can do together starting May 22nd. So anyway, I'm excited to uh, share this with you. You know, I spent a long time uh, acquiring this information and it can feel very frustrating. I'm, I'm happy for the internet, but it can feel very frustrating sometimes because it's like I've got big, giant, you know, uh, barrels of clean, fresh water. And all these people around me are so thirsty, right? So thirsty for feeling happy and feeling healthy and feeling relaxed and feeling connected and feeling supported and feeling loved and feeling accepted. All of that stuff. And yet, I'm, I've been having a hard time getting the water to people, <laughs> right? And so it's like, all right, how do I get this out to people? And so I figured, well, I'm gonna let God take care of that. I'm just gonna create the videos and put them out into the universe. I'll throw a little bit of money behind it to boost it because on Facebook, you never know if people are ever gonna see these videos or not. And so I'll throw a little bit of my own money behind it just to put it out there as well. And then, you know, the rest is out of my hands because we can only do what we can do, right? So, but we gotta do our part and that's the important thing. So I'm gonna do my part, you do your part by sharing these videos, sharing them with your friends, your family, people who you care about, or if this is something personal for you, then make sure that you hang out with me each night and uh, it's gonna be a pretty awesome experience. I've got so much to share with you that I'm gonna have to actually map it out and outline everything um, because there's so much that uh, I got to break it down into little bite-sized pieces, but it's gonna be fun and uh, The stuff you learn is gonna be pretty amazing because this isn't the stuff that you're gonna learn in Weight loss books because I read those books and this is not where I learned that stuff I learned the strategies. I'm gonna share with you from working with literally I've done 10,000 individual weight loss sessions over the last 11 years alone right now I've been working with people for since 1995 so that's a lot of sessions, tens of thousands of hours I have spent, um, you know, helping people and learning and, and listening and, and swimming around in people's unconscious minds. And there are very specific, clear patterns. There are ways that we sabotage ourselves and there are ways that we have tremendous breakthroughs. And, uh, and I'm going to share some of those with you over the next two weeks. And I'm pretty excited about it. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate you going on this walk with me. I'm heading back now, go hang out with the fam, but I do appreciate you being here with me and I really hope that you get a lot out of this. If you have any questions as we go through our series, then leave comments and let me know. And uh, I will make sure that I answer every single question that people post because, um, you know, if, if it matters that much for you to be here, then you matter to me, <laughs> right? So, um, so I want you to know that, that if you have any questions about anything, then go ahead and ask, and I will make sure that those questions get answered in the upcoming videos. Other than that, I just wanted to say thanks so much for hanging out with me and going for a walk with me tonight. If you're just hanging out, sitting there watching me walk, that's okay tonight. It's 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. your time or 4 p.m. your time to grab your phone and just go for a walk with me. Then we can walk and talk together. That'll be pretty amazing. So, all right, thanks so much. I really appreciate you. And I look forward to uh, helping you to make your goals and your dreams this year become a sure success. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.